Good morning, everybody. Well, looks like I got my little baby stove hooked back up. I've changed to something that may or may not affect its um, output. Can you guess what it is? Yeah, I shortened my chimney pipe. Last time I had it coming up here before exiting out, and then I just had that piece of concrete board just screwed you know, to the inside here, so I've tried to make it a little bit better. I need to get some metal tape. I kind of broke the edges right here on each side, so I'm gonna take that metal tape and just make a line. But the window's completely installed and sealed, and uh, I'm trying to make it look a little bit nicer. You know, but that's relative. You know, look where I live. <laughs> look what I live in, you know. Um, so, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I solved my problem I had last year with my flue pipe, uh, or not my chimney pipe, kind of wiggling on the base. Is I bought a 5-inch exhaust clamp, or, you know, hose clamp, I guess you could say, which made that really nice and secure. And the stove, you can see... Uh, it's looked better, so I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to go buy some of that high temperature exhaust paint and paint it and burn it in really good. Because believe it or not, next Friday night and Saturday night, it's going to be 20 to 0 degrees. So winter time is on a high speed course to hit in any moment. So I want to make sure I got this installed. So the next thing I need to do is I want to make... Um, a chimney pipe brace you remember last year how I just had that wire wrapped around it just for just to get it done just to hold it to keep the wind from blowing it because I know that pipe was pretty tall so what I did is I went to to tractor supply and I bought a section of this and this is one and three inch by 72 inch galvanized metal so what I was going to do is bend this at a curve to fit flush against the chimney pipe and then this piece was going to be bent for the back side. That way I could bolt the ends to the front. So it would be like a, you know, it would securely hold all the sides of the pipe. And then take the ends down here and bend them out and mount them to the side of my mobile home. This right here will provide a great deal of strength and security to that uh, chimney pipe, I feel. So first thing I got to do is figure out how to make a nice round bend. So, so a guy just had an idea. Now, what this black circle is, that's the cover plate for the cooking stove. <laughs> and it's about six and a half inches, a little bit more in diameter. But it'll give me a nice curve to what I'm shooting for. And then if i got to tighten it up later to fit the pipe a little bit better, I can just tweak it, you know. And voila, here we go. And it fits pretty good. Let's get her to go like this. Bam. See? Look at that. Close enough for government work. Now what I need to do is duplicate that with a shorter piece. And I'm just going to use what I already have to get that bent. And then that's going to go on the inside. And I'll use the holes and I'll just get a bolt and bolt it there. And there we go. We just made a chimney pipe brace for, I think I've got, uh, I think this was $14 and that was like eight or nine. So a little bit over 20 bucks, we got a chimney brace. And if I had to buy one, they're like 130 to $175. Yes, please. I'll do this all day. You know, you're doing something right when you break the bolt in your aircraft snips. <laughs> So I had to go buy a couple nuts and two bolts. These are not what I was really kind of looking for, but they'll work in a pinch because the rounded side is going to go on the inside. And then I got this, I guess you call it a lock nut. So that's what I'm going to use to tighten that with. So here we go, folks. I've got about $15 in this metal here, and this metal here was 8 bucks, so a little over $20. And then I've got... Around nine dollars for these two bolts and two nuts. Yeah, I know they were stupid expensive. The bolts were two eighty nine a piece, and the nuts were two twenty nine. I mean, they're chrome plated. They're made for like a square head something. I don't know. They're not exactly what I was looking for, but they'll work. But I'm still in this a lot cheaper than if I had to buy a chimney brace. This will work. Now all I got to do 
is take this outside when I get ready to install my chimney pipe and make sure it's long enough and if this isn't long enough to get where I want it I can just go get another piece of metal and cut it and I can extend it I can just bolt it here and make it as long and short as I want so that's a win man so now I'm gonna disconnect my stove give it a good wire brushing and I bought some paint and the paint I bought is this Krylon specialty high heat heat resistant up to 600 degrees just for fireplaces or wood burning stoves so I'm gonna get rid of all the nasty rust and stuff where I had it out on the front porch and it, I think I left it overnight and the dew and stuff got to it and it kind of put a flashing coat of rust on it so I'm gonna give her a good look and then I'm gonna start it on the, my front porch and give it a good burn in Now, whenever I spray paint something, I always do a bunch of light coats first. I don't try to gob it all on the surface at one time. There you go. That's about all you want. Now when that tacks up, eh, in about five minutes, feel free to go back do it again and again and again Heard a big tree branch break. Come on, man. Here we go with the new paint job. Don't look too bad. I hate those stupid hearts on here. I wish I could just like grind them off. <laughs> it's so dumb. But besides that point, you know, don't look too bad. For an old stove made in 1950, it will do the job. So this brack or this brace is gonna be plenty long. I'll probably have a good four inches on each end bent out and I'm just gonna anchor it up here with uh, some screws. And now I need to go and get me a 90 degree elbow. My other one's broken. Well, I got a little fire going. I did something a little different this year. I bought two fire bricks and put them on the bottom. Actually, one and a half fire bricks to keep a lot of that really hot heat off the bottom of the stove. I just kind of felt like that would be the thing to do <laughs> instead of having the fire directly on the steel. But it's it's working pretty good. Now the only other thing I'm kind of concerned with is I know my chimney pipe's not gonna be as tall as it was last year on the inside. Uh, it's only gonna come up about, let's see, about this high. Maybe a little bit more and then there's going to be a 90 and it goes into the wall and i know a lot of my heat's going to be in this stove pipe but hopefully it'll still do i won't lose a whole lot of heat outside which i'm probably going to lose some but you know it is what it is it's all tri trial and error so we'll see but i'm just giving her a good burn letting this stove paint cure and kind of get hard do you have to do it probably not but you know it's always good 
you spray like a heat resistant paint on anything that you give it a cure times and it's got to get hot in my experience so that's what i'm doing but yeah i think i might go and get me some uh, hickory pieces and throw in here and just give it a good long burn that's about eight o'clock at night been doing a steady burn i got some i think they're hickory pieces it might be some mesquite pieces i had sitting around but just sitting there chugging away this thing is good and hot well anyways folks that's all i got for today's video hope you all like it please like and subscribe if you would please check out my links below in the description help support a guy like me out visit my teespring store check out my amazon links i greatly appreciate it see you all later